Hello everyone, I'm Wendell Jones and welcome to another edition of the program, The Platform. On this program, we examine the national issues of the Bahamas and sometimes international issues. In recent weeks, we have seen many things before the courts of the Bahamas with respect to investment in the Bahamas. There have been many arguments before our high court. Indeed, there have been many injunctions uh, before the courts of the Bahamas for judicial review of projects in the Bahamas. And one such action has to do with Nigad Key. And uh, we know from reading our newspapers that there have been uh, overtures made by Mr. Peter Nygaard to people who are involved with Save the Bays and other organizations dealing with the environment to bury the hatchet, so to speak, and to come together uh, to resolve a number of issues with respect not only to Nygaard Key but to Clifton and to do away with um, the legal actions before the courts. Since then, we have not spoken with Mr. Nygaard personally, but now today we are privileged to have him as our guest on the program today. Peter Nygaard is well known throughout the Bahamas for his philanthropy, for what he has done for scores of Bahamians, or what he is doing for the environment, among other things. And so it is once again a pleasure to have him as our guest on the program. Peter Nygaard, welcome. Always nice to be back here. Nice, nice to see you. And you're looking uh, fitter and fitter. fitter. Uh, yeah. No, it is this program I'm on really does work. You know, I mean, I think that's a good way to start. Everybody who sees me, you know, after years, they say, my God, you're looking younger and younger. And my body's getting stronger and stronger, better and better shape all the time. It, it's not a matter of bragging. It's really a matter that what I'm on really works. Mm. You know, and what I'm on is to, to reverse my age to stop the aging process and, in fact, make us get younger. It is a phenomenally, phenomenal statement. You know, you have sort of parallel this to this great Steve Jobs, and he really, really created a huge a electronic communication system for us and, 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 and became really one of the most famous people in the world for the right justified reasons. Mm -hmm. What I'm on dwarfs that. This, 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 this is about our own health. This is about our own longevity. This is about our, the most important thing to every human being is how we, we age and how we prevent ourselves from getting ill, how we can give ourselves a longer, longer life, a healthy, longer, longer life. And, 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 and I'm just getting more and more indoctrinated into it. Having regard to your work schedule, your workload, you, you have businesses around the world. Uh, you have been dealing with a, a large number of issues, not only uh, in the Bahamas, but elsewhere. Uh, one wonders how you get the time to do the kind of things that you do. I do do. I wonder about that as well. I have never been busier in my life. I am working every moment, every place I go, every where, where I'm, I'm taking a shower and I'm working. And, 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 and in that, you have to squeeze in your exercising. Mm -hmm. And then I do exercise with great deal of intensity. You know, that exercising is the toughest thing you can do. It is so tough to get in there and run out of breath because that's what you really have to do in order to exercise correctly. You have to exercise your heart and your lungs. And the only way you can do that is to run out of breath to get that heart really working and get those lungs really taking in that oxygen and, and to be able to shoot that through your body. But to get that discipline, to be able to be self-motivated like that, that's a biggie. Mm -hmm. Most people need a trainer or something to remind them that, you know. And, and fortunately for me, that I've been always sort of self-motivated. And I feel guilty. I feel guilty if I don't do those 400 push-ups. And you do it every day? Every day. Every day. I don't look for any reason. I'd rather keep my appointment waiting than to go past that, you know, because we really are full of excuses. Well, not today. It's raining out and whatever the excuses are. Mm -hmm. And, and it's, it's, it's training your body to get into that groove. And I've seen so many people who are in that groove. And when they're in that groove, they just got to put that time aside, et cetera. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I do, you know. And, and I feel all the time I'm not doing enough but at least I'm doing, you know. You're doing and I think the key thing is intensity. You really kind of hurt yourself a bit. 
you know, you really got to go push yourself further as if you don't have any more breath in you, you know, you're running out of breath, as if you really cannot do one more push up, you know, etc. Oh, oh, oh. so because most people go through these motions, or, you know, and, and it's, it's, while it's good, it doesn't really build. You really got to build. You know, there is a thing, if you, don't, if you don't hurt the muscle a bit, you're not really building, you know. And then, because that's the process of building, like muscles, for example. Mm -hmm. But same thing if you're not out of breath or getting some sweat on you. If you're not getting some sweat on you, you're not losing any weight, you know. So there, there, there is an issue of really pushing this issue a little bit further and doing it with more intensity. You Never mind just doing yeah. it, but doing it with intensity. You're 74, so you intend to continue to do this for... Um, it, it, it definitely. Eh? As soon as I stop any of it, zzz, down he goes. You know, and, uh, you, you, you ran a picture of me in the back. It is my new, it's my new picture, you know, that mm -hmm. I, I'm running for, 19, for 2016. But that picture now is symbolic of really where I'm at in my life at this stage. And when people see the picture of 25 years ago and see the new picture, they think the new one is 25 years. They think it's reversed. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it really is, really maps me out right now. And I sort of want to catch that in history right now. To, you know, and that's why I even ran that picture. We're putting that on the hang tags now. And what, did that, what that symbolizes is a symbolization of being healthy, symbolization of building your muscle, symbolization of being in shape, symbolization of being casual, you know. And that's what my, my, my pants also represent that. They represent a new lifestyle, you know. And what, the, what is the word slims? To make you slimmer. Now we do, we get slimmer many ways, but in my slims alone, I can bring you, make you slimmer already automatically. But with that comes the whole message of please eat right. Please do exercise. Please mm -hmm. take care of your hormonal balance mm -hmm. and the prevent the medicine. So I sort of carry with that picture, the whole message, you know, with it, you know. And so that is an encouragement to women uh, as well to exercise more. Eh? It is. It is. It really is. And and and, and that the picture said, "Gosh, you know, look at how young he looks." And that's. And then the next statement is, "I want to do that." Bingo. <laughs> they bingo. That's over there, right there. Mm -hmm. So, so, so I've, I've, I've sort of, I've sort of updated myself as well around here, and 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 I am, I am living proof that what I'm doing, when the living proof that this works, yes. physically and internally, right now, and 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 and, and mentally as well, and mentally as well, mentally as well. That's right. I'm out there getting ahead of myself. Look, I, I have muscles and bones and, and skin of a 25-year-old, but I still have joints of a 7-year-old mm -hmm. on my knees, on my shoulders, on my back, are collapsing on me. But I am not sitting still. No, I am finding ways of rebuilding cartilage. I am finding ways of rebuilding our connective tissues right now. I am actively involved with that. You know, so whatever is breaking down on me, man, I am out there trying to cure it. You know, and I'm so intense about it. So right now, you know, like what you see is not a perfect human being. My, I, I got, I got bad knees. I see. I, I'll admit it. Yes, yes. <laughs> because you know the thing is that when you get to 70s, you are going to break down. You know, mm -hmm. and you better get, you better recognize that, but try to prevent yourself from breaking down. But what you do, there's ways of solving that right now. And one of the key words is this word called stem cells. Stem cells. Yeah, yeah. I, I know that we can talk about slims, uh, we can talk about stem cells, the environment, and many other issues. And sometimes when I have you before me, sometimes I don't know where to begin. <laughs> but I, I want to talk a, a bit about the overture that you you made uh, to uh, Lewis Bay and all of the other people who have been involved in this long feud um, here in the Bahamas with respect to uh, your property, uh, some of the uh, judicial reviews that, uh, that we have before our courts. Why did you thought that you should make the overture to settle all of these issues? You know, um, the earlier topic really very well jives into the topic you just brought out, you know, this issue of, of, uh, of my neighbor. Earlier topic was very significant, the uh, stem cell topic. Mm -hmm. And as we've also had on this program, a tape that I played yes, that yes. really is world famous tape, you know, where I returned myself to age zero and, 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 I'll, and the ramifications of that. But the whole concept that the prime minister and I had 
is the issue is to bring this wonderful new stem cell medicine into Bahamas. You know, that's the reason he wrote these laws. You know, and that's the reason that I, I had taken him out on the truth before he was a prime minister. You know, say, look at if we ever want to put Bahamas on the map, Mr. Prime Minister, and you do want to do that, and he does. He says, this is the way to do it. So he became very learned about that whole thing. And he actually did some speeches about that very thing that I had taken him on the road. So he didn't put those laws together for, for, for naive reasons and for any personal survey reasons for me. He did it for all of Bahamas. And, 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 and we have not got traction on that after three years now. And that takes us all the way back to Mr. Lewis Bacon. He has done everything in his power behind the scenes to put stoppages on everything, to belittle it, to, 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 to stop the prime minister from looking good. And, 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 and from working harmoniously with me as well as other people, doctors, etc., to put this across in a real proper way. He, Lewis Bacon, does not want this prime minister to win the next election, does not want this prime minister to win, does not want this prime minister to succeed. And over and over and over, you've got this alligator in our swimming pool over here, keep biting away, at, biting away at it, and we can't go for a decent swim, you know, get all these kind of things done. And it's best symbolized by just a very small issue in regards to me, you know. But, but you know, Bahamara was part of this kind of similar kind of thing, you know, doing a deal with the prime minister up front and then doing an end run on him, you know, as he did with Bahamara kind of thing, you know. And, and he's done a deal with me and uh, with Louis Baker's representatives and doing an end run on him, you know, and, and throwing him into courts, et cetera. Mm -hmm. this, th this whole thing started way back when the other government and the other government, you know, was, uh, was uh, I don't want to use bad words here, you know, but, but there was not such nice things going on there, you know, in terms of me, you know, and, uh, and influences that Lewis Bacon had were way in excess of what he should have had. And they had already decided and sent out bids. Can you imagine this? Bids to tear down Nygaard Key completely. After 30 years of it standing there proudly, after 30 years of being one eighth wonder of the world, after 30 years inviting everybody over to join that place, 30 years of the government bringing investor after investor, investor into the country, showing how beautiful these facilities, how well entrepreneurs like myself and business people can work with the government to get things done. And after all that, all of a sudden, we got this strange request to show, prove me. Prove it to me that everything you have done for the last 30 years was legal. Prove it. And if you can't prove it to me, tear the place down. Holy cow. I, I thought it was a joke, mm. a very bad joke. But you know, it's that close to being real. And I gotta give, I gotta give the Prime Minister Ingram at that time some credit here, you know. You know and, uh, and, and, uh, and he put a stop to it. He had no legal jurisdiction to send out such application invitations, and he stopped it smartly, you know. So here comes the new government, you know, and, and they now had in front of them my application to build my home in there, a burnt down home, and they have an application, you know, to, to do that. And Mr. Bacon said there's environmental damage. So they went through and checked that out, got the best, most professional, professional uh, consultants that there are in the world, not once, but twice, you know, and there's some lots of money had been spent on these people to prove without a doubt that there has been zero environmental damage, that everything that Lois Bacon was proposing to do was false. And they were completely satisfied that they were completely within their legal jurisdiction to issue the permit to build, as well as the lease on which some of the building was going to be occurring and has already occurred on government land. It had occurred on government land 30 years ago, and with a letter saying, we will give you a lease for these things that we approved you to build it, because it's a very narrow piece of property. You know? and never delivered that lease. So I said to him, you can't have this Lois Bacon keep coming at me without that, I don't have a lease. Please, lease the property to me then. I said, okay, and, and they had prepared this. Mm -hmm. And what happened? 
it is unheard of in the history of, uh, history of judicial systems that Lois Bacon took an injunction mm -hmm. against the government to stop them from being able to authorize the lease. And the question is why? And it was the craziest reason of them all, which, which, which was unheard of. The junction was across year, uh, one mile away down near Jaws Beach, you know, that you need binoculars to see from my place. There was an injunction issued against the government to stop the government from allowing to dock to be built there for the Bahamian people. A dock for the Bahamian people, the dock that had been torn down by Lewis Bacon's people so as to prevent the Bahamians to come in and launch their boats, the very same boats that they go out fishing for their livelihood every day, the ones that they've been doing it for 30, 40, 50 years over there, they no longer had this dock. You know, they pretended that it was torn by a hurricane, out down by a hurricane, and it was put shampoo. Fine, then people want to rebuild it. The injunction was to stop them from rebuilding it. Stop them from rebuilding a dock for the Bahamian people on their Bahamian land. You know, you you had something to do in the funding people to rebuild the dock. Oh sure, mm -hmm. I'm out there helping any time with Bahamian people. Yeah, I said you, by all means go ahead. I'm all for it. build the dock back and put, give them a chance to launch their thing. I've been a fighter for Bahamians to have rights to that Jaws Beach from get go. You know, and Mr. Bacon doesn't like me for that. You know. Uh, you know, I've been a person who's been inviting Bahamas to Nykaard Key, but also across there for, for, for the Clifton, uh, you know, jaw speech over there. But presumably because they put this injunction in there, I became what you call an ex-party, a fifth part. And I'm a one mile away across the bay over there, and that injunction now applied to me as well. What? What is this? You know, is, and anybody says that doesn't make any sense to get a, but, and it was done in the name of Save the Bays. Well, Save the Bays is just a cover for Mr. Lois Bacon. It's just today's way of putting a hood over your head. You know, you hide behind something because you don't want to be upfront yourself about it. Uh, Fred Smith is, is, just, is just a token for, for Bacon's mouthpiece to keep me in, 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 in the class suits. You know, that's what he gets paid for, millions of dollars. So, 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 so here I got caught with an injunction. Now, that I can't even fight. The prime minister has to immediately, within two weeks, get rid of that injunction and then take action as his responsibility to do so. His responsibility is to make those decisions. That's what he's, we hired him to do. Good. So they sued the government, including the prime minister. Uh, they wanted to stop whatever was taking place yeah. at Clifton and Nygaard Key. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and the question is why? Now, from various newspaper ads that Save the Bay has been running um, in the newspaper, uh, we saw that they claim that you expanded your, your land, uh, doubled the size of your land. Uh, speak to that. Yeah, a big exaggeration as to how they showed those pictures as mm -hmm. to where my expanded land was. You know, uh, you know, it, 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 it. There, there's a certain amount of expansion of the land. There's a certain amount of the buildings that were done with approval on government's land. You know, meaning that it, it, my land is here, and then there's 10 feet or 20 yards further, I put some, I put some pilings in, in there. You know, it's a very narrow piece of property, and we had approved, and step by step, by the government, every step of the way. You know, all our approvals were in place. So, so what they picture as being expanded, like they have the beach as if it's my land. Mm -hmm. it's, it's government's land, you know? Mm -hmm. But they just make it seem like my land because, because uh, it suits their purpose right now. It's government land. It's government land. And this is land that you would want to lease. Well, this is a government I want to lease now because there's such a controversy about the fact that I'm using this government land, presumably for personal personal usage. So, so fine, okay, so lease the land to me then. You've already promised me you're going to lease the land to me. Mm. And by the way, there was one issue that was very significant. You know, my, my marina, 
that I inherited uh, with the property way back 30, 40 years ago was always full of sand. You know? And twice a year, we'd have to take the sand out and put it down on the right-hand side, which formed that bit of a beach on there. And then it would go right back into the thing again. And that was our routine now for the last 30 or 40 years. And I just segue here for a second. Same issue as Jaws Beach has for Lyford Key's own channel. Jaws Beach loses that sand into that channel, then once a year or so they have to put that sand back onto the Jaws Beach. Mm. The migration of sand seems to always find itself into these kind of bays, right? Mm. So that was happening with me all the time. Also, what happened to me, and there's pictures earlier, my beach was on the north side. It was an extension of the Lyford Key Beach all the way down there. But uh, to 1996, a big El Nino, and it was proven El Nino shifts occurred, and we lost a lot of beach, sand all the way up and down Lyford Key Beach. I was the worst to lose it. It started first at my point. I lost all of it, you know. And all of a sudden, what used to be beach, I just have water, you know. Mm. And in fact, my first cabana was called Beach Cabana because I built it on a beach with permission, and now we're sitting in the water, you know. To, so we had had this natural accretion of land. I guess that's the right word. Accretion. Yeah, accretion, accretion yes. of land. And it, it, it came back around the point. It came back onto my south side. Mm -hmm. And then it went to always find itself back into my marina. You know? So I asked permission to build a blockage like most people can and do to stop it from leaving my beach and stop it from going into my marina, you know. So, and, and I got permission to that, you know, and, and therefore the sand that accrued against that thing became a little bit bigger than before. Hmm. It used to go in the marina, now it stayed over here. So that caused the expansion of your beach? That caused the expansion of the beach, that's right. I lost it from the north side and I gained it on the south side, you know. And, 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 and all with permission. Now, I then applied to get a way of putting berms up, like everyone else, to prevent myself from losing sand off my beach and for prevent it from going into the marina. And my God, you think I could get it. You got 30 people in Lyford Key that all got it. You can go up and down anywhere over here. Everybody's, everybody's protecting these beaches. And I'm the only guy who can't get the permission for that. What's wrong with this picture? <laughs> what did I do wrong, Mr. Prime Minister? <laughs> I did. Do, I was applying for it, applying for it, applying for it, applying, and I'm still applying for it right now. You know, presumably, Mr. Bacon says it's causing environmental damage. We got to pick that point up. Let's take a break here. Uh, this is the platform, and uh, we have Peter Nygaard on our program today, talking about the issues uh, surrounding uh, Nygaard Key and uh, Clifton, uh, and uh, we want to talk some more about uh, the letter that you sent to everybody to drop all of these legal actions. We take this break, and we'll come right back. Go ahead. 